Welcome to The Peak, where becoming your best self is our goal. I'm Ashley Russo. On this week's episode, how a nonprofit's mission helps create stability for all, delicious vegetarian and vegan options, and how St. Luke's partnership with Robert Wood Johnson helped save a woman's life. All that and more coming up on The Peak. Ripple Community in Eastern Pennsylvania has a clear mission to provide individuals a place to call home. Let's see how this organization is changing lives for the better. What really inspired me to work in a nonprofit setting and particularly here at Ripple Community Inc. is just my belief in the power of community. Everything in our lives ultimately comes down to community and connection and many of us uh, are in situations where we can take those things for granted but many of our neighbors are not. We tend to primarily serve people who are marginalized because either they are struggling with homelessness or housing instability, maybe living with a severe mental illness or circumstances that have just meant that their lives are a little bit harder. The community center at its heart is really just intended to be a safe, welcoming daytime space for anyone in the community who needs it. Our programs are open to everyone. We work with an amazing group of partner organizations that provide more specialized services. So by providing those services here, we're really shortening the distance between those critical services and the people who need them. Nani kept seeing me while I was homeless and stuff and said, what's wrong with your legs? Even though I was dirty, probably smelly, he didn't look at me any different. I just felt more at ease there. Ripple taught me how to let my guards down and still be comfortable. The second program that we run here is called the RCI Village. That is our permanent, community-supported, affordable housing program where they can put down roots and really become part of the community and stay for the long term. Not just to be housed, but to really establish true homes for themselves, for their families, for their children. And that's really the purpose of that program. Somebody told me to come to Ripple because the only way I can get my kids back is if I had an apartment. Within me being here almost a year, my girls came home. If you're seeking help and you really, you're about your business and you really need help, Ripple is the place to come to. If they can't help you, they're gonna put you in a direction where somebody can help you as far as the community is concerned. It opened up doors that I wouldn't even imagine. The Ripple community is my second family. Ripple is a very unique, place. A lot of places have a zero tolerance policy. We do not. We understand that anybody can have a bad day. Sleeping outside, hot, cold, rain, sun, it can affect anybody's mood. Bad days are built into the model. It makes me feel very enthusiastic about just continuing to do this work and building a place that is safe and welcoming and inviting. You're a person when you come in here. You're not a number, you're not a statistic or anything like that. And these folks care. They've helped me tremendously with things. And sometimes when I come over here, I have an issue or a problem or something. Within five minutes, I'm laughing and carrying on just like everybody else. <laughs> RCI Ripple has always felt like a bit of a magical place to me because we are so focused on people, we're so focused on relationships, and we're so focused on community. When we say that we are part of a community here, we really mean it. Permanent affordable housing is not just a necessity, it's a human right. I'm so thankful for organizations like Ripple for stepping up to the challenge. Now let's check in with Holly as she explores vegetarian and vegan restaurants in our region. We hope you're hungry because we're talking about vegetarian and vegan options that you don't have to sacrifice flavor for. We're continuously awed by the amazing creations these chefs dream up. Let's start with a slice that's out of this world. It's Lehigh Valley's first all vegan pizza shop where you don't have to give up everything when you have dietary restrictions. Paranormal Pizza is located in Bethlehem and it's where you can find 16 inch pies made in house. The cheese is made from cashews and the pepperoni slices on top, they're made from seitan. 
It's pizza made for vegans by vegans who want to eat great pizza but without animal products. Simple as that. Plus, the decor inside is X-Files themed to add to the unique vibe they're going for. From one savory dish to another, customers rave about the vegan mac and cheese here. This is Veg Out in Bethlehem. Burgers, mac and cheese, and pierogies are on the menu at Veg Out. Owner Mary opened up her restaurant in 2019 and satisfies the taste buds for those longtime vegans and those more veg curious. Veg Out's food is 100% plant-based with no animal byproduct and has perfected their recipes over the last several years. They've taken the vegetables you're likely already eating and made them into savory comfort food dishes you'll crave. Order it to go or sit in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner among a sleek and fresh space with tons of natural light to brighten your mood. So get that milkshake you want or the cookie you've been staring at and feel good doing it. We told you, we hope you're hungry. And if you're not yet, Here's something that's sure to make your stomach growl. Last on our list is Hummus House. Bethlehem's Hummus House is a Mediterranean-style restaurant with healthy vegan and vegetarian options customers rush to. The recipes used here have been passed down for generations and have been perfected for most every taste. From arnibit to hand-rolled grape leaves, fatouche and tabula salads, the modern twists the owner and chef think up are delicious every time. The business namesake dish is available in several varieties, including roasted garlic hummus, roasted red pepper hummus, and sun-dried tomato hummus. Oh, and again, vegan mac and cheese. Need we say more? The next time you head out with a group of friends and family with different tastes, try any one of these restaurants to make everyone happy. Life is full of decisions. Eating should not be a tough one. I'm Holly Harrow with Discover Lehigh Valley, and that was A Peak at the Valley. Thanks, Holly. Who knew that vegetarian options could be so hearty and tasty? Up next, find out how to get your heart pumping with tips from St. Luke's. Stay tuned. You're watching The Peak. Lifting your own body weight can improve cardiovascular endurance and muscle strength. Check it out. Hi, I'm John Graham, Senior Network Administrator for Fitness and Sports Performance at St. Luke's University Health Network. Today I'm here with our group exercise coordinator, Haley Goldman, to introduce exercise tips for body weight. Thanks, John. I'm Haley Goldman, coordinator of the group fitness program here at St. Luke's Fitness and Sports Performance Center, West End location. Today the focus is on body weight strength training. Benefits are you can do it any place, anywhere, anytime. You don't need any special equipment. First, we're coming down to the floor into a hip press or glute bridge position. On your back, arms lengthen down alongside, place your feet on the floor about hip width, and you should be able to reach your toes. We engage through the hips, push the floor away through the feet, and lift those hips and squeeze your butt. Lower those hips back down. Again, tuck that tailbone between your thighs to feel the glutes activate. You can make it more challenging by pausing at the top and holding that for a few seconds. Next, we're moving off the floor onto our feet into a good morning. The hands come behind the back, the shoulders are back and down, and the feet stand about hip width. As we lower the chest to the floor, think of sending your butt back behind you, keeping the back nice and flat, engaging through the abdomen, and soften up. Let the knees bend slightly. Lowering the chest towards the floor, spine looking to become parallel to the floor, and then push through those feet, engaging through the back of the hip again to stand. Next, we move into a standing T or a single leg RDL. If you need to for balance, place a chair or something stable alongside you and you can hold on for balance. Standing on your forward foot, whichever leg you wanna stand on first, knee is slightly bent, we send the back leg behind the body and engage it. Same idea, we hinge at the hips, but now as we lower the chest towards the floor, we raise the leg behind the body. And again, sending the hips slightly back as we lower the chest to the floor. 
Thank you for joining us today. Please try these tips at home. See you next time on The Peak. Boy, Haley makes it look easy. I was taking some notes for my next at-home workout. You will definitely recognize our next guest as he's been a host of The Peak TV for 10 years. That's right, our very own Mike Mittman talks about his on-camera experience for the last few decades, his new radio show, and his continuous involvement in the Lehigh Valley. Welcome to another episode of Unscripted with Russo. I'm your host, Ashley Russo, and I'm being joined by someone very special today, Mike Mittman. He has been my co-host, my friend, my partner in crime all over the valley for the last 10 years on the Peak TV. So Mike, thanks for joining me. Mike, you have had such an illustrious, amazing career and amazing life. Um, so let's take people back to the beginning. Tell me a little bit about your childhood. Where did you grow up and kind of what was your family structure? I am a rarity. I am a born and raised Allentown, Pennsylvania guy. Uh, I was born here, raised here, grew up here, graduated from William Allen High School. And uh, so I used to listen to the radio all the time. Um, back in the day, num uh, number one station was WAEB. And I, and I listened to all the, the jocks on the air. And I said, I want to do that. I can do that. I've had the pleasure uh, of announcing all over the, 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 the nation and outside all over the world, but I always couldn't wait to come back to Allentown, Pennsylvania. Yeah, LA was great. Vegas was great. They were all great, but couldn't wait but to This get is your home. home. This is your home. And My home, yeah. You've got some exciting stuff going on right here in the Lehigh Valley. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, about your new radio gig. I mean, it's sort of funny to say you, you, you've kind of always had a radio gig, but here you are with something new and that's exciting. So tell us about it. It's with iHeartRadio, uh, which is, you know, you don't get any better than, than iHeartRadio and the brand new Real Oldies 1470 and the greatest hits of the 60s and the 70s and right now we're the only one doing it that's so cool i love it so as someone who's been here your your whole life tell me about one of your favorite a couple of your favorite things to do in the lehigh valley you got the famous lehigh valley zoo which is a great thing to do the crayola factory you and i've been there uh doing uh pieces doing stories many many times what about restaurants? Like there's a place, you, do you have a go-to? Do you have a, a, a hangout that you like to, to go, you know, to get a meal? One of my favorite places, uh, Villa Lentini restaurant. Uh, it's an all official Italian. I've never restaurant. been there, Mike. Yeah, it's in, uh, in Whitehall. It's great. <laughs> and, and the patio, they have the, the vineyards, uh, the, uh, the vines over the patio, just like in Italy. Uh, so I love it there. Yeah, the, so what what do you think makes the Lehigh Valley so unique and special? It's got small town uh, um, way of life, but yet it's big town. And what I always appreciate, and I think a lot of people appreciate, even now, maybe more than ever, uh, so you're close to Philly, you're close to New York. Yeah, it's convenient. I mean, it's convenient. It's, it's, it is, you're right. That's the feel. You feel like you're kind of in a small town in the country, people do know each other. Um, there's a great sense of community here, but we do have access, right? We have a lot of access to great, great stuff. You are a, a Lehigh Valley legend, Mike, and we're so honored to have you on the podcast and also to have you as a part of the Peak TV. All right, Mike, well, thanks for joining us on Unscripted. Until next time. Thank you, Ashley. For the full interview, visit youtube.com slash the Peak TV. And don't forget to subscribe to Unscripted with Russo on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. When a health concern arises, having a trustworthy network is crucial. Let's see how St. Luke's and Robert Wood Johnson worked in tandem to save a life. The normal heart squeeze is around 50 or 60%. That's 
when the heart squeezes 50 or 60% of the blood out to the rest of the body. When someone has a dilated cardiomyopathy, the heart is squeezing half or a third of the normal amount and it's also kind of stretched out. Usually the, the average patient who develops heart dysfunction um, is above the age of 60. For Alyssa, uh, seeing her in her 20s, her heart was working at less than 20%, which is about a fifth of where it should be. So when we saw her, she was in pretty serious condition. After my diagnosis, I was put on the life vest. So that was in case my heart would go out, it would shock me back. Dr. Prasad told me he was gonna send me up to Robert Woods Johnson. Several years ago, we were looking to create a relationship in New Jersey that would allow us to improve access to care for patients that chose to or needed to have their care delivered in New Jersey that might have been at a level that we couldn't provide here on this campus and Robert Wood Johnson Barnabas Health is one of the largest, if not the largest, health network in the entire state of New Jersey. They can provide that higher level of care that we don't offer here on this campus, and then those patients will come back to this community for their follow-up care. The coordinated team from Robert Wood and St. Luke's made the assessment that she needed a defibrillator for the long-term protection for her, especially how young she is. She was able to get that defibrillator with Robert Wood and follow up here at St. Luke's to continue her cardiac rehab. I loved everybody up at Robert Wood Johnson. They, the nurses were fantastic and they did a really good job. A patient's need to go to RWJ Barnabas is really dependent on what their condition is as determined by their caregiver here. We'll assess the patient's condition, determine whether that patient can be cared for here in Pennsylvania at our Bethlehem campus or needs to, because of insurance reasons or patient choice, have their care delivered in New Jersey, in which case they can be referred to RWJ Barnabas Health. You know, as providers, that's, that's all we're looking for is to, to find ways to help our patients uh, get back to the things that they love. I can finally swim again. It really helped with my job because now I can do a lot of things that I wasn't able to do before. Having a place like St. Luke's is great. I love it here. Since Anderson to here, to Warren campus and up at Robert Woods Johnson, St. Louis is just awesome. I wouldn't pick anywhere else to go. We're happy to treat you in Pennsylvania if that's good for you and can be done with your insurance carrier. But if not, we've got this, this emerging relationship with RWJ Barnabas. This is gonna be a full-fledged clinical, academic, and research and strategic partnership. And so continuing to um, assure the support at all levels between our organizations is something we'll be focusing on so that the relationship really stands the test of time. Joining me today is Dr. Raymond Durkin. Dr. Durkin is the Chair of Cardiovascular Medicine at St. Luke's University Health Network. Thanks for being here, Dr. Durkin. Thanks for having me, Ashley. Cardiovascular services at St. Luke's have grown so much under your leadership and your tenure. What are some of the cardiovascular services that are offered at St. Luke's? It's such comprehensive care. Um, some people with cardiovascular disease need, need the highest level care. And our tertiary center uh, continues to be in Bethlehem. And that's where we bring people from around the area to do the most uh, complex procedures. We uh, try to take the full gamut out to the community but have the expertise concentrated in, in our Bethlehem campus. When you're out in the community and the cardiologists are seeing patients from all over the region, what does a patient need to know if they have a concern? Where do they go? Where do they start? You know, we do find people then who need more advanced therapy, uh, you know, be it a bypass surgery, um, treatment of their atrial fibrillation with an ablation, um, a new heart valve. Those are things that we need, again, to bring into a more tertiary center uh, where we have the, you know, the equipment and the expertise to do that. The partnerships and the communication and the relationships are there to handle anything. So they should speak up, right? They should see their doctor. How do you work as a cardiologist with those primary care physicians to make sure that people are speaking up and are getting their basic health needs met? My feedback to them is make sure you're seeing your primary doctor yearly um, you know, both men and women ha have different needs, whether it's a mammogram, it's getting your, your PSA checked. And I, and I think the, the primary care 
physicians in our communities are the real, the real gatekeepers of medicine. Help us better understand the partnership between Robert Wood Johnson and St. Luke's and how that's really working to better patient care. We have a, a hospital in New Jersey, Warren, where we have a full-time cardiology practice. And because of insurance issues and the cost of some of these things, they need to stay in New Jersey, certain patients, to have these more tertiary procedures. So though we can care for them you know, in our Warren Hospital, when they need that highest level of care and they can't come to Bethlehem, we partnered with Robert Wood Johnson to make sure they can get the same care that we do in Bethlehem in New Jersey. The technology has grown and changed so much in medicine, in particular in cardiac care. Why is it important for St. Luke's to continue investing in the newest and best technology? You know, we can actually determine if somebody kills just a few of their heart cells, which will lead us to earlier and more appropriate treatments, say, for coronary artery disease. Um, you know, CT scanning and ultrasound has become much more sophisticated uh, that we can actually, you know, get a very, very global look at the heart, uh, you know, relatively quickly and efficiently, and then make appropriate treatment decisions to really not only make people feel better, but to prolong their lives. Well, that's what it's all about, certainly in medicine and definitely in cardiology. So Dr. Durkin, thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. As they say, not all heroes wear capes. Sometimes they wear white coats. I'm Ashley Russo. Thanks for watching. To learn more about anything from today's show, go to our website at thepeaktv.com. And remember, every day is an opportunity to be your best self. This is The Peak. It's a Tuesday. It's Tuesday. There's no fun on Tuesdays. Oh, pumping. I can see fine. It's okay. Yeah, we oh. <laughs> oh, you guys need to see too? That's so weird. Be so hearty and tasty. <laughs>